good morning. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome to Journey into the Word with J.P. Olson. Good morning, Georgian. Great to see you here this morning. Fill us, Lord, with your power. Live inside of us. Good morning, Adele. Good to see you. Georgian from Eastern Tennessee, Adele from Boston, Massachusetts area. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We're in your presence. Good morning, Geraldine. As we listen to the music this morning, we can read the comments in the box of all of the um, activities, how to stay connected with us. We want you to stay connected. Praise God this morning. Yes, we want you to stay connected with us if you're here for the first time. Yes, uh, we, we you can stay connected with us through Facebook. Uh, through Twitter, we have our information, our Twitter link, our social media sites we have, our Instagram, our YouTube. We don't ever want to be out of contact with you. We want we to know what's going on in the ministry and go to our website as well, www.thewordwithjkolson.com. We have our blog. So we have many ways to stay connected. Today is communion this morning. So if, while I'm talking, you want to get your juice, your wine, your, your bread, your wafer, we're going to... Do communion and go into the Word of God. Also, the music that you're listening to is on my CD. And if you want the CD, you can go to my website and purchase it, Amazon, um, iTunes. Good morning, Colleen from New Mexico. Uh, you can purchase it from there or you just want to good morning, Lisa, Wisconsin. If you want to just get one or two songs, you can download the digital tracks. Good morning, Wilma. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Juliana from New York and Wilma from Wisconsin and we have our Tuesday night Bible study. Uh, trying to, we want to know the Word of God. It's so crucial to understand the Word of God and know the Word of God. So on Tuesday night, we have our Bible study with Dr. Kenneth Alley, a theologian that really teaches and go in depth with the Word of God. And then on Monday, we uh, we have a daily inspirational reading that goes out to about over 300 people in our database to help you get through the week. The Word of God, ins words inspired by God to sustain you through the week. So if you're not on our mailing list, please go to our website and sign up to receive those inspirational readings each Monday. Thank you, Lisa. I'm trying. <laughs> so we um, so we want you to receive those uh, readings every Monday, every week they go out. And they're words and inspirational readings of encouraging, encouragement. And then on Wednesday, my Just Passing Through at 1 o'clock Central Standard Time, the Chicago time. We want you to join us on our Wednesday, 1 o'clock just passing through. And we're gonna, like I said, there are gonna be some a few changes made and we will let you know once we get those started, uh, what will be going on there. And um, so just a lot of great things are happening. God is bringing th things together for us and we're just grateful. Good morning, Celine from Georgia. So I wanna let you all know this morning we're doing communion. So get your juice, get your wine. You'll wait for your bread so we can partake of the meal this morning. And thank you again, family. It's great to come and sit here and your family is waiting to greet you. And that's a blessing. That's a blessing. So I've, list, I've, in, I've mentioned the information about the CD, about the uh, our blog. We, we have our Monday blog. So it's listed here on our page here on Mondays. You can read the blog. We have our inspirational readings that you can receive. Uh, the CDs you can purchase, the Bible study, the different ways to stay connected to us. And if I've missed something, I'm quite sure that uh, Geraldine will let me know. But we want, good morning, Nicole from Minnesota. Good morning. So we just thank God for people are from the, are here this morning from the various states and the various nations. And we're just blessed. Uh, the, the Lord increase my territory. The J Bass prayer. Increase it, Lord. And so, uh, good morning, Devon from Tennessee. So we just thank you this morning that you are joining me and we're gonna get into the word of God this morning and, and just bless everyone here this morning with love and happiness. We thank you again as we come together and, and uh, prepare to receive uh, the word of God, prepare to receive the um, communion and prepare to receive whatever God has for us today. We're ready. I want to say welcome. Good morning, uh, Anime. 
from uh, I think we, we're grateful to have you here. Those who are joining us from Pakistan, from uh, India, from New Zealand, from Australia, from Africa, we are so grateful. From Jamaica, uh, we are happy to have you here this morning. Uh, know that we are family. If you're here for the first time, those are from the Philippines that are joining us. If you're here for the first time, know that we welcome you to be a part of our family. Uh, we are followers of Jesus Christ. And so we're grateful that you're here with us. So I want to welcome you, family, this morning. Come to the table so that we can partake of the Word of God. The spiritual meal is being served. The table is spread. And there's a feast going on over here. I am thankful, as I often share with gratitude, that each of you have joined me today. Today we will have communion, as I mentioned here on uh, Facebook Live. Get your juice, wine, and bread, and wait. We're going to go right through that. Good morning, Sarah from Minnesota. Lord, we thank you this morning. Lord, we give you thanks, Father, for you are good and your mercy is in this, Lord. Here we stand at the start of this weekend, Father. We are distracted by many things. Many things that's going on in the world today, Lord, that's distracting. And Lord, we ask you to turn our eyes now to the one who comes in your name, the one who opens the gates of righteousness, the one who answers when we call, Lord. Help us to stay focused in this troublesome world. Um, I went through all of the announcements, so if you uh, didn't get the announcement, you can stroll through the comments here and you'll see all the announcements that I went through. So let's talk about communion. Let's get prepared for communion. Uh, what does the Bible say about communion? Scriptures on the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, the Holy Communion used bread as a symbol of the body of Jesus and wine as a symbol of his blood. The act of taking communion does not save us. It is an act of worship and remembrance. The Lord's Supper is about remembering the person and work of Jesus. Um, the, the, he's in verse number 2, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty five. I'm second. Uh, Corinthians is the verse I'm going to use today for the communion. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty five. Say, do this in remembrance of me. And this remembrance is commanded. This remember use, uh, remembrance uses tangible elements, bread and wine. It is not enough simply to say remember. The elements of bread and wine are given to stir our minds and hearts. The physical action of eating and drinking is designed to remind us uh, that we spiritually uh, ingest and depend upon Jesus and the saving benefits of his life. Good morning, Anna. Great to see you. Good morning, LJ, both from Wisconsin. <clears throat> Just as food and drink are essential to sustain physical existence, so also the blessings and benefits that come to us through the body and blood of Christ, are paramount to our spiritual flourishing. It is a personal remembrance. We are to remember Jesus. The focus is not on Abraham or Moses or Isaiah. The focus is no longer on the Jewish Passover or the night of his betrayal or anything else. The focus is Jesus. It says, do this in remembrance of me, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty-five. Good morning, Renee. For those of you who are joining me for the first time and for those of you who may not be aware of what we're doing this morning, we're having communion. Every first Saturday uh, we come, we have communion. So I was asking, I want to get your juice, your wine, uh, your wafer, your bread, and, um, and let's share and partake. Good morning, Carolyn. Praying for healing for you, Carolyn. Yes, yeah, so I'm grateful to see everyone here this morning as we, I got a word for you. I don't want you to leave. I want you to stay here to get the word that God has given me for you this morning. So in 1 Corinthians 11, 23, 20, get your bread. The New Translation Bibles. Say, for I pass unto you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it into pieces. And he said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So we will eat the bread now. And then in verse 25, it says, In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this to remember me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. So let's drink now. I want to thank you for those who are able to partake of the Lord's Supper with me this morning, the meal. We thank you, Lord, because this is the day that you have made. 
we will rejoice and be glad in it. That's in Psalms 118, 24. When you arise in the morning, think about what it is to have a precious privilege. It is to be alive. Good morning, Dave, Pastor Dave, to breathe, to think, to live, and to love. My message for today is, we'll, we'll take that information down for you, Nicole, to pray for Dan for healing. Yes, Geraldine will get that information. The message for today is Proverbs, from Proverbs 13, 12. For Dan's mom, I'm sorry, Dan's mom. Proverbs 13, 12. Unrelenting disappointment leaves you heart sick, but a good break can turn things around. Good morning, Jonti from Haiti. Good morning. The Lord have people on from all around the nation today, and we're, we're grateful. If you are still living, then disappointment is inevitable. Webster defines disappointment as when expectations fail to be met, producing anger and frustration, sadness, and discouragement. Thank you for the heart. Disappointment with those we look up to. Disappointment with those we live with, those we work with and depend on, and those we have poured our life into. But there's one last disappointment I want to dig into today's message. Good morning, Nancy from Tennessee. I want you to know that this is the year you overcome and survive every disappointment. Because you keep living, you will be disappointed. And most of the time by somebody close to you. No matter how great the disappointment, take it to God first in prayer. Even if you must enter your prayer closet, hurt, disappointed, bitter, angry, confused, rejected, abandoned, used, betrayed, lied on, suicidal, take it all to God in prayer. Even if that prayer will last long until the night. Good morning, Nancy. Thank God that he never sleeps or slumbers. Take it to him, then rest in him, knowing he is going to bring something good out of your something bad. If you're still living, as I mentioned, then disappointment is inevitable. Today's message, unrelenting disappointment leaves your heart sick, but a good break can turn things around. Now, with that said, here are some examples to help you when you are Disappointed with those you look up to. Think of Samuel and Eli in 1 Samuel 1 and 4. Samuel's mother entrusted her child to Eli, the high priest. Some of y'all know the story. Eli couldn't control his own house. Okay, he was a high priest. Confident he men mentored Samuel and prepared him for God's service. But Eli had a serious character flaw. He was weak, passive, he was a weak, passive parent who stood by while his own sons abused their priestly privilege, bringing shame and disrepute to the family and ministry. There's a very befitting quote that says, he who thinketh he leadeth and hath no one following him is only taking a walk. I believe it's fair to say that Eli was only taking a walk. I mean, with a mentor like Eli, who would have even blamed young Samuel for taking a nosedive right into the very heart of immorality? When the man he looked up to failed him so badly. But no, instead he filled his disappointment and kept his eyes on God. The Bible says Samuel grew and the Lord was with him. 1 Samuel 3.19 And as a result, God turned him into one of Israel's greatest prophets. Henry Ward Beecher, a writer, accurately stated, one best success comes after their greatest disappointment. The Lord said, well done, Samuel, well done. So how are we to deal with the disappointment we feel in those we look up to that let us down? Because it's bound to happen at some point in life. Whether it's a parent, a clergy, a family, a friend, a business, associate, a spouse. Good morning, Pam. A governmental official, we are bound to be let down by those who look up to, who that we look up to. But does that give us a license to lower our standards because they didn't raise theirs? Absolutely not. Samuel grew and the Lord was with him. You see, even when Eli messed up his role, Samuel maintained his character. He never attacked Eli. He didn't bash him. He didn't talk about him. He didn't spread rumors, lies, gossip, or even truth about him. No, Samuel just lived the life of a good leader, which reminds us that we can point fingers and lay blame, but where does that get us? Even if we're in the right, the better bet is to take the high road, live right and think right and speak right and behave right, no matter how wrong your surroundings or the people in them are. 
So the next time someone you look up to lets you down, keep them in prayer and be a mirror to them, showing them the reflection of what good, not perfect looks like. Why? Because Eli died and missed out. But the person you look up to doesn't have to. Good morning, Gazelle from North Carolina. So share your heart with them gently and honestly. Then whether they agree or disagree, you must move on with showing everyone that you can learn a good lesson, even from a bad example. Don't judge them. Just refuse to make their same errors in judgment. You can do it. I know you can. Eli was not a good mentor. Number two, you're disappointed in those you live with. If anyone wouldn't let you down, surely it would be your family, right? Wrong. Just as young Joseph. When his father favors him and God promised him a big dream, you think his own blood brothers would celebrate him and celebrate with him. But instead, they responded with jealousy and anger and bitterness and spite and ridicule and resentment while dropping him in a pit, then selling him into slavery. But you know what happened? Joseph, he was promoted. Joseph, everything that happened to Joseph, from the pit to the prison to the palace, he prospered. He dropped him in a pit, then selling him to slavery. Far from friends at home, he languished in a prison for a crime he didn't commit. What an invitation to bitterness and an opportunity to rehearse the wrongs done him while plotting his revenge. But if he'd done that, he'd have died an innocent, unknown convict in a foreign jail. Instead, he allowed God to vindicate him, using his circumstances to position, prepare, and promote him to being Egypt's prime minister. Now, that's how you deal with disappointment. Robert Keysword said it like this. The size of your success is measured by the strength of your desire. The size of your dream and how you handle disappointment along the way. Well done, Joseph. Well done. So how do you deal with your family, your own blood that stabs you in the back and still holding the knife? But what happens when the attack is from an assailant under your own roof? What do you do when it's your siblings that drops you in the pit? Or your cousin that sells you out? Or your auntie that lay, lands you behind bars? How do you recover when it was a relative that inflicted the hurt? You do as Joseph did. You trust God throughout the entire process. Nowhere do we read that Joseph cried out, why me, God? He didn't blame dad for not being there to protect him. He didn't retaliate against the cupbearer who forgot him. He didn't get angry with the whole world and try to issue his own form of the big payback. God never left his side. He never left his side. In every bad, good, God produced something good. Now it is easy, especially when it's blood. To just trust the vindication and vengeance to God alone. God said vengeance is mine. But it's the way to handle it. To put what you will mishandle in the hands of God. Because you know we'll handle it. When we handle it our way, some of us will end up in jail. So we have to give it to God. You come at me, I'm coming at you. And that's what we say. But no. But it's the best way to handle it is to give it to God. To put what you will mishandle in the hands of God. In the end, those same relatives had to come and bow before Joseph. What they have? They had to come. God will make your enemies bow at your footstool. He'll make your enemy your footstool, okay? They had to come back to the one they put in the pit to sell to try to kill as well. Lying on. The man grew in statue. He became the prime minister. The relatives had to come and bow before Joseph. Will that happen with you? Probably not. But isn't it worth it to trust God and let him work? Maybe, just maybe, you'll at least get the apology. And more importantly, you'll get the re reconciliation. And sometimes you may not get the apology, but just move on. I want to tell you that they take the high roads, my friend. Even when it's family, they're trying to drive you off course. Number three, you're disappointed to those you work with and depend on. You see, to succeed, you need people. You can't make it without them. And when those people fail you, it's painful. Now, not that you can't make it without people, because when God placed you in a certain position, that's it. But many times you'll need some people sometimes. But it's painful when those people fail you. Moses' disappointment. Let's look at Moses' disappointment. Had it been me or probably you, we would have left the people and left them there. Down there doing all the foolishness, we would have just left them. 
he leaves his brother Aaron in charge while he attends a summit conference with God and receives the Ten Commandments. Returning, he finds Israel in anarchy, idolatry, and unspeakable perversion. And where is Aaron, you may ask, the brother he left in charge? He's the one leading the rebellion. When Moses needed him most, Aaron fails him miserably. But watch Moses' true leadership shines even in darkness of disappointment. He confronts Aaron, takes the mess to God for resolution. See, he had to take that mess to God for resolution. And he prays forgiveness for Israel. God listens, then reminds Moses of his assignment. It's disappointing, Moses, but go. Lead the people. My angel will go before you. God will say to you, it's okay. I got it. Vengeance is mine. You go do what I assign you to do. Let the people lie. Let the people backstab you and steal care in the night. Let them do all those things. I got this, God says. You don't have to see any results, see anything. God says, I got it. But God told Moses, he said, Moses, <clears throat> go lead the people. My angel will go before you. Because Moses was disappointed. He left his brother and child and he was leading the rebellion. The people down there just gone crazy. Exodus 32, 34 in the NIV Bible. Listen this morning. Good morning, Heather. Disappointment doesn't cancel your assignment, okay? Just because somebody disappointed you and let you down, it doesn't cancel your assignment. You keep it moving. Good morning, Hannah from Jamaica. You keep it moving. Disappointment doesn't cancel your assignment. Thank you, Anna. Nor does it close the door on God's presence. So go forth, even doing disappointment, and do what he sent you to do. Man must be disappointed with the lesser things of life before he can comprehend the full value of the greater. Well done, Moses. Well done. So leaders, dare I even ask if you've ever been disappointed by your leaders? Surely you have. Many of us have. But that doesn't mean you disown them. You don't give up on them. You don't give them the cold shoulder, throw them up on the bus. You don't attempt to replace them. You don't ignore them. And certainly you don't retaliate tit for tat with them. No, you follow Moses' example. Take the issue before God. Let him tell you how to handle it. Not your inner circle, not your cliche, uh, your clique who want to give you a cliche to use. So we're not talking about taking it to your inner circle or your clique, not your buddies and your pals, not people you don't like them. We see what happened to the division of the kingdom with Solomon's youngest son. We'll listen to good advice from the elders, listen to his foolish friends. So Moses took the issue he had with Aaron, his leader, to God. And God could have told Moses, get rid of Aaron. You don't need him. You're the key person to this assignment anyhow. No, he simply tells Moses to not focus on the attack, but on his assignment. I'm going to say that again. He told Moses not to focus on the attack, but on his assignment. He said, go, lead the people. My angel will go before you. Leaders, I do not have time. Oh, I do not have to, to tell you, not the time, but I do not have to tell you just how difficult it is to lead people. I can tell you, it's difficult. Especially those who are stiff-necked and hard-headed and rebellious and got all the answers. But do you get to retaliate? Nope. You are still held accountable for your leadership, your life and lifestyle and your responses to offense. Your character and integrity must remain intact. You must still be above reproach. Even when those you lead keep falling under it. Hi, Sarah. Yes. Yes, the disappointment hurts. But you can't let the womb infect your assignment. Do what Moses did. Thank you for the hearts. Take it to God. Receive his directives and continue. Why? Because God said, go, lead the people, which means others will be affected by how you respond when disappointment comes. Don't let childish immaturity be the only way your followers can describe your leadership. Handle it, rise above it, and keep it moving. Keep the people moving forward. Don't mess up your ministry because you're mad. People sometimes will do stuff intentionally. Just to, and the devil will set you up to set you up. 
Number four, you're disappointing those you poured your life into. Now let's check in again with Moses, the founding pastor of the first church of the critical and the ungrateful, a congregation of former slaves, delivered, abundantly blessed, en route to the promised land, but without a shed of loyalty or gratitude for the man who put everything on the line to make it all possible. Fresh out of Egypt, they turned on Moses, accusing him, blaming him, and berating him. That's in Exodus 14. Was Moses disappointed and hurt by it? Sure. Who wouldn't be? But each time he wanted to quit, he discussed it with God. Pray for his complaining. Yes. Flock. Receive fresh orders from headquarters and return to work. And that's what you do. You take it to God and then you go back. Would you say, hey, Dale, his plan is the only plan and the best plan. God called men and women do when they are, <clears throat> this is what they do when they're disappointed and feel like giving up. They go back to the headquarters and talk to God and get orders. That's what they do. If you use disappointment as a sort of mid-semester exams for learning, you will learn that every disappointment you overcome makes you stronger and wiser. The greatest success stories have been lived by those who had to grow strong and wise in that very way. Once again, well done, Moses. Well done. Leaders, once again, I want to encourage you because it's not easy to take one vision and try to get an entire house to see and follow it. I know it would be wonderful to have the whole house on the same page. However, realistically, our churches are family trees with a whole lot of mixed nuts, okay? One person wants a school. The other person thinks the school won't work. The other person doesn't mind a school, but doesn't like the blueprint of the school. And all the while, you wish you could throw all of them in detention and keep them building the vision by yourself. But unfortunately, pastors, it doesn't quite work out that way. We are part of one body with many members, and every member is vital to the health and well-being of the whole. So even when it seems like you can't get one good, solid supporter, remember you always have God. And with him, you are, in, you are the majority. Moses led a frustrated, frustrating bunch of complainers. But did he throw in the towel? Some of us would have thrown in the towel and left him right in the desert. And said, you're on your own. Find your own way out. No, and neither will you. Like it or not, but you will pour even more of your life into the people. And some of them have eternal leaks. They have eternal leaks. But that's not your problem because they have eternal leaks. Stop trying to patch up everybody leak. Because that's not your problem. You can't patch up everybody's leak. Their capacity is for God to handle. You simply pour yourself into them. Are you getting this message? I pray you're getting it. Thank you, Anna. God will never allow you to dry out and die. He will continue to replenish you. His chosen vessel of honor. Therefore, understand the disappointment will visit. But don't let it move in. Stay the course. God's got you. Now take a moment and look at 1 Samuel 15, 10 and 12. God spoke to Samuel. He said, I'm sorry I ever made, Samuel, uh, made Saul king. Yes, yes, Juliana. He said, I'm sorry I ever made Saul king. He's turned his back on me, God said. He refused to do what I tell him. Samuel was angry when he heard this. He prayed his anger and disappointment all through the night. That's in the Messenger Bible. As already stated, if you're still living disappointed, it's inevitable. But might I add, it's not impregnable, which means unable to overcome. You see, when anger and disappointment threatened Samuel, he fought back in prayer. If you're smart, you'll do the same. Disappointment only delivers a death blow to those who don't fight back. You can literally read those verses and feel Samuel's anger. After all, do you know how mad you must be to pray angry? Have you ever got gone on your knees and prayed and you were angry praying and disappointed all through the night? That's all right. That's okay. <laughs> At least you're praying. Just because you started praying anger, that's okay. He was mad and he was disappointed all through the night. He prayed mad and, and, and he was angry. But sometimes prayer is the best thing because when you're hurt, and anger and disappointed, your mouth runs faster than your mind. And sometimes you say things, you can't go back and retract them. Thank you for the heart. That's why I said we let God handle it, because some of us would be in jail if we handled it our way. So, 
Sometimes prayer is the best <clears throat> thing. Because why? When you're hurt, you're angry, and disappointed, your mouth runs faster than your mind. So you tend to say some things that you meant to say, and a whole lot more that you didn't mean to say. But when you empty all of that out to God in prayer, he's a master sorter. He'll sort it out. He knows how to pick through that prayer for what's really needed. Therefore, no matter how great the disappointment, take it to God first in prayer. You may say, God, I want to just punch them out. I want to just slap them. I just want to knock them down, Lord. Go ahead and tell him that. It's okay. He know how you, you feel it. But Lord, I'm bringing it to you. Because I know that's what I'll do. And I may say the wrong thing. But you take it to God first. No matter how disappointed you are. Take it to God first in prayer. Even if you must enter your prayer closet hurt and disappointed and bitter and angry and confused and rejected and abandoned and used and betrayed and lied on and suicide. Take it all to God in prayer. Even if that prayer will last all night long. Thank God he never sleeps as I mentioned earlier slumber. Take it to him. Then rest in him knowing he's going to bring something good out of your something bad. Now we talked about disappointment with those we look up to. Those we live with. Those we work with and depend on, and those we poured our life into. But there's one last disappointment I want to dig into, and that is disappointment in ourselves. It's potentially the most debilitating kind of disappointment because it can throw you into a downward spiral that's hard to stop or recover from. Rollo may, <laughs> may said, depression is the inability to construct the future. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all here, you know what I'm talking about. You're disappointed in yourself. And there's something about that word disappointed and disappointment. When my kids would really act out, I knew one word to use to get them to, because they felt that word. And I would say, you, you know what? You really disappointed me. Now, I could have said, you know, I'm upset with you, la -da -da, but when I say, you, I'm disappointed in you because of something they knew they shouldn't have done. That word sends a message along for some, because you're going to feel that when someone say, you know, I'm disappointed in you. You disappointed me. But what about ourselves? And for most of us, who can tell the whole truth? We've had so many little disappointments along the way that we can't even fathom a pencil sketch of a big future because we've been disappointed all along the way. Disappointed sometimes by what the parents say to us. Disappointed by something in the marriage. Disappointed by people we trusted. Totally disappointed. You, you, you entrusted somebody. What you say, Pastor Dave? You can overcome self. You can overcome anything. That's right. That's why we need to also work on self-control with the fruit of the Spirit. We have to understand. We have to forgive ourselves. We have to love ourselves. How can anyone else love you if you don't love yourself? That's difficult. You want everybody else to love you. You don't even love yourself. You're disappointed in yourself. But we've had so many little disappointments along the way that we can't even fathom a pencil sketch of a big future. Well, there's an even better quote that I want you to hold on to by Albert Ellis. He says it like this. You largely construct your depression. It wasn't given to you. Therefore, you can de deconstruct it. I'm going to say it again. You largely construct your depression. It wasn't given to you. Therefore, you can deconstruct it. You see, mounting disappointments are melt with all directions pointing toward the destination of depression. But remember, anything you can construct, you can deconstruct or cause the destruction of it. The other definition I like is to dismantle and expose the workings of. If you're built up and constructed disappointments in your life, you can also grab your toolkit and deconstruct those same disappointments. Take them apart. Dismantle them and expose the works behind them so you can e ensure that what worked before in building that disappointment won't ever work again. Tear it down. And even if you brought the discouragement on yourself and the disappointment and depression on yourself, there's still a way to recover. Just ask Peter. Ask Peter. I'm giving you some good examples this morning. Peter has sworn undying love and fidelity to Jesus. Lord, everybody else may abandon you, but not me, he said. And he said it with confidence. I'm yours till death. Read Matthew 26, 33 through 75. And he meant every word of it. 
He meant every word of it. But under the pressure surrounding the crucifixion, he yields and three times denies knowing Jesus. But later, remembering Jesus' words before the rooster crows, you'll deny me three times. Peter was heartbroken by his own dismal failure, went outside, and he wept bitterly. He wept bitterly. He was even warming himself by strange fires at one point. Read Luke twenty two sixty two. 62. Have you ever been there asking God, how can you possibly use someone as messed up as me? I lost a job. I flunked out of school. I had this baby out of wedlock. I had an abortion. I have a prison record. I fell off the wagon again. I've destroyed my finances. My health has fallen apart. My marriage is on life support. And we're both ready to pull the plug. I can't even remember the last time I prayed, Lord, or fasted or studied your word. How can you want to use me? I can't remember the last time my hands clapped, Lord, or even praised you. Hi, Aaron. Or even when my feet danced or praise was on my lips and worship in my spirit. How do you want to use me, Lord, when I haven't even prayed? Lord, my family is, is messed up. They are feuding mess. The loans were denied. The bills are about to drown me. There's so much to pray for regarding my kids. I don't even know where to start. My parents are getting sicker. God, I can't get two sentences to make sense in my head, Lord. Why are you still trying to use me? Have you ever been there? Have you ever been there? Have you ever been there asking God, how can you possibly use someone as messed up as me? Lord, all these things happened to me. I tell you, I, I, I was the dumbest thing in school. I was the last lack, laughing stock in school. I lost my job. Lord, I had the baby out of wedlock. Lord, I don't even know who the father is. Lord, I have a prison record. I done done it all. I fell off the wagon, drugs, and alcohol. I've destroyed my finances, Lord. My, help is fall, my health is falling all apart, and it's my fault. My marriage is on life support. Lord, we head into the divorce court. And we both ready to pull the plug now. I can't even remember the last time, Lord, I prayed. I fasted or studied your word. I can't remember the last time I clapped my hand. I raised my hands. I danced my feet of praise. Uh, I can't even remember when praise was on my lips. And worship in my spirit. Lord, my family is a feuding mess. Can nobody get along. All the siblings mad at each other. The parents are passed away. The grandparents passed away and we don't even talk. Lord, how do we do it? The loans were denied. The bills are about to drown me, Lord. There's so much to pray for regarding my kids. They're all out of control. I don't even know where to start. My parents are getting sicker and God, I can't get two sentences in my mind uh, to make sense in my head. Lord, why are you trying to still use me? Listen, Peter failed to meet his own expectations. But Jesus was never shocked. This is why I tell you, things you do don't think it surprises Jesus. It doesn't. He know it before you know it. He already knew Peter was going to deny him. He was aware of Peter's flaws when he called him into the ministry. He knew that he was uh, his blustering, outspoken disciple had a tender heart. Because he needed Peter with him. Peter, Peter kept things under control. Peter cut the man ear off in the garden. God, Jesus said, don't do that. Put a, Peter cursed people out. He'd be ready to fight in a minute. <laughs> Jesus knew this about him. But he hadn't received the Holy Spirit. They hadn't had, no. None of that had happened. Peter was ready to fight. You mess with Jesus. He ready to fight you. <laughs> you need some of them people with you in your posse, in your group. That's why you see these people with their bodyguards and they go, Jesus had his posse with them. Peter, with Peter didn't play. You come here you trying to take my mask, I'm going to slice your ear off. Jesus knew how he was, knew he had a temper, and he, and, and he called him this rock. He was his main man. Jesus knew he had a temper. That's why I tell people all the time, stop surrounding yourself with all folks who say they're saints and believers. If everybody is a Christian in, in, in your flock, you ain't got time for no, non believers you ain't got time for other folks. Jesus had them all in his group. He didn't go looking for doctors and lawyers and this. But Peter disappointed. Peter disappointed himself. Jesus knew what was going to happen. 
He knew that Peter was like, that, that his blustering, his outspoken disciple had a tender heart though. He knew that Peter had a tender heart. So he extended grace to him as God has given us his grace and mercy. He extended grace to him rather than remove him from office. As I said, he was his main man. And as disqualified as you may feel from all of your disappointments in life, God is going to remove, he is not going to remove you from office or your assignment either. God is not like man and he'll do that. He's not going to remove you. He's giving you an assignment. He knew your flaws already. He knew your weaknesses already. When Christ gave post-resurrection orders to tell his disciples in Peter, Mark 16, to meet him in Galilee, he reaffirmed his choice of the failed disciple. The rest of Peter's story is in the New Testament history. So yes, you can recover even from disappointment in yourself. Don't you think Jesus was disappointed at times? But he was Jesus. So many people let him down. People close to him. At the, at the crucifixion. The, where were the disciples? He looked down. He only saw John with his mother. Where were they? He's on the cross. You think he was disappointed? Think he was disappointed in Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, who sold him out for some kibbles and bits? You think those things didn't disappoint Jesus? So yes, you can, re you can recover even from disappointment in yourself. Even Jesus. We can look at the things that happened to him. They spat on him. They talked about him. You, 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 don't you think, believe that he was disappointed in them? But he did not show that. He did not say it. He did not demote them. Peter was his main man. Even after denying him. Even after sitting out there with, warming himself around strange fires. People he didn't know. But when you're a part of Jesus' flock, people recognize you. People recognize him. He was a part of Jesus' flock. You sound like him. You act like him. Never forget, God is the master potter. And no matter how many times we, his clay, become marred in his hands, he never throws us away. He, he, we're never discarded. He simply molds us again into another vessel he can use again. That's why I say God loves uh, when people, when we're thrown in, away in the trash, he goes and pulls pull us out of the trash. He goes and pulls us out when people, other people throw us away. We're disappointed in ourselves. You have so many people disappointed in themselves to go take their life. They commit suicide. They're disappointed because they feel their parents told them that they were disappointed because they didn't do this or they didn't turn out to be this way. And so all they've been getting is just disappointment. People, friends let them down. And they're disappointed and they take their own lives because they're disappointed in themselves. Don't you dare let disappointment get to you. In Jeremiah 18, 1 and 6, God told Jeremiah, up on your feet, go to the potter's house. When you get there, I'll tell you what I have to say. So I went to the potter's house and sure enough, the potter was there working away on his wheel. Whenever the pot the potter was working on turned out badly, as sometimes happens when you are working with clay, the potter would simply start over and use the same clay to make another pot. Then God's message came to me. Can't I do just as this potter does, people of Israel? God's decree, watch this potter. In the same way that this potter works his clay, I work on you, people of Israel, my sons and daughters here. I will work on you. Don't be disappointed in you. At any moment, I may decide to pull up a people or a country by the roots and get rid of them. But if they repent of their wicked lives, I will think twice. And start over with them. At another time I might decide to plan a people or country. But if they don't cooperate. And won't listen to me. I will think again and give up on the plans I had for them. That's in the messenger bible. So let up on yourself today. If you think you ruined God's purpose and plan for your life because of your screw ups. You clearly have underestimated God's love. His care. His protection and provision for you. You are not strong enough on your worst day to dismantle God's assignment on your life. You're not all of that. Neither your mistakes nor your deliberate willful sin can hinder what God has for you. Don't let people try to, as I say, try to remind you of your past or try to disappoint you. Uh-uh. 
God can use you with all your flaws. Look at, look at his entourage. Look at the people he had around him. Look at the one female that was by his side all the time, Mary Magdalene, where he cast out seven demons. Look at the people he kept around him in his circle. People that you probably would say, I wouldn't waste no time with them. Oh, they can't be around me because they got a reputation. Jesus brought them around him and used them in a powerful way. Thank you for the heart. Despite what everybody else want to throw you away because you're not this and, and you're not in this clique and this group and, and you don't have this big church and you don't have, you don't have this kind of house or this kind of job or this kind of whatever. These are the people that Jesus, Jesus used. If you look around at the people Jesus used, they have a history. Everybody else was disappointed with them. And they were probably even disappointed with themselves. But God said, no, uh-uh, you're mine. No, God's assignment in your life. Neither your mistakes nor your deliberate will for sin can hinder what God has for you. So know this, today is the day you forgive yourself and determine to be better today than you were yesterday and better tomorrow than you'll be today. Every day he gives you brand new mercies. And not so you can keep going over the old disappointments and not that you can allow people to keep reminding you so you'll stay disappointed. You can tell them, I don't know who your messenger is, but he needed updated information because I'm not that person. I'm happy with myself. I love myself. Why should I be disappointed? Oh, all the things you've done, you should be disappointed. The way he did you, you, did, you should be disappointed. No, I'm not disappointed. I'm happy with Jesus alone because he's my comforter. He helps me. He takes the bad and make it good. So I'm not disappointed. This is the year for you, I'm saying. Today, friends, if last night wasn't your last night, God still has much in store for you. So stop beating yourself up. Sometimes God uses our greatest disappointments or reappointments to life and ministry. He hasn't given up on you. So don't give up on yourself. And I'm trying to give you a message this morning. Don't give up. But you said, Pastor Dave, love, Jesus love rejects. He's a good daddy. He's a good father, Abba. He loves you. It's a new day. It's a new dawn. Don't you dare give up on yourself about some disappointment. Don't you even let anybody remind you. You make a renewed you today and fulfill your purpose in life. God is waiting to hand you your next assignment. Now get back to work. Get up now and get back to work. He's waiting on you. He has another assignment for you. This is the year you overcome and survive every disappointment. This is the year that you overcome and you survive every disappointment. There will be disappointments in life. And it's okay to feel sad. Just don't wallow for longer than necessary. Disappointments are just God's way of saying, I've got something better. So be patient. Have faith and live your life. Look up Joseph. Look at him. From the pit to the prison to the palace, he prospered. He could have been disappointed. He was disappointed with his brothers doing that, but yet still they had to bow in his presence. Disappointment was not meant to destroy you. They were meant to strengthen you and give you fortitude to accomplish your destiny. Disappointments are inevitable. Dis discouragement is a choice. You encourage people. It is how you handle your disappointments that define you. What you say, Sarah, learn and grow. I'm trying to preach you, Liana. I'm trying. It is how you handle your disappointments that define you as a person. If you get up after the fall or just lay there in defeat. When you find your path, you must not be afraid. You need to have sufficient courage to make mistakes. We will all make mistakes. And we will probably all be disappointed. But disappointments, defeat, and despair are the tools God uses to show us the way. He could have been really disappointed in Peter. But he said, you're my rock. Build this church on this foundation. After all Peter did, denying him. Cutting off the, 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 guy, the guard's ear and all the other things that he did. And Jesus used him mightily. In the upper room. Yes. Jesus raised him up mightily. 
out of what he, isn't that disappointing to hurt you? The person you trust thought was loyal to you, deny knowing you. That hurts. It's disappointing. What'd you say, Lame? You receive it in the name of Jesus? Yes. It hurts. Disappointment will come. The people you trust, the people you thought had your back, the things you may have said to your children you should not have. The things that you and your spouse said to each other, the spouse said to you and it disappointed you, belittled you. You're disappointed. But you're not the problem solver. Jesus is. He got your back. He said, don't worry about that. M Moses could have been a mess. He trusted the one person he thought had his back, his brother. And he was leading the rebellion. But God got you. He got you. That's my message for today. I pray that you share this message with someone. I pray that you got some nuggets, as I call them, from my message today. Today is the last day that you're going to be discouraged. Today is the day. This is a year. Not just a day. This is the year you overcome and survive every disappointment that creeps in your path. Thank you for the hearts. This is the day you overcome all of that. Because there are going to be some disappointments, but hey. You ain't got to stay there. You don't even have to let it affect you. you. You keep it moving. So, okay, oh, well, that's life. That's it. Let me keep it going. Because God said, I have some more assignments for you. And you got to be effective. You can't be walking around depressed and disappointed. You can't get disappointed about everything, think you can do an effective work. You got to be positive. You got to be positive. And I want to jump right into this. I don't want you to leave what you say, a powerful message, Gazelle. Thank you, and thank you, Nicole. And I just want to share this with you. I want to thank those of you who stepped out last week when I made a plea to help for some situations going on. We're not quite there yet. We need a few more offerings to help uh, do what we're trying to do uh, for those that are doing the work of God. Yes, thank you, Sarah. Deuteronomy 8, I'm at the point now where we all can take part in this. That's why I don't want you to, 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 to leave yet. Here's a time where we can participate. It is called giving. God is our never-ending supply. That's in Deuteronomy 8, 11. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 8 reminds us that we must not forget why we have life and why we experience success and the ability to produce wealth. Thank you, Georgian. God has a never-ending supply of resources, and he is our provider. When we give generously, we are reminded that the one who enables us to give is perfectly capable of doing it again. Giving is a form of worship. In 1 Corinthians 29, 1 and 20, when we give generously and sacrificially, it is not because God needs anything, but because we want to show our love for him and we want to help others. Giving is an expression of obedience. Yes, but also of gratitude and trust and increasing joy. God seeks out and recognizes those who worship him. We have people hurting and things that needs to be done. And, and, and you all answered the plea last week, those that came and helped. And we, but we're falling short some and we need to get that done. We need a missionary now who needs eye surgery so she can keep walking the countryside to deliver these messages to people to receive Jesus. Thank you, Celine. You have to give, you give to be blessed. Just step out on it. I want to tell you something. Give to be blessed. The word of God says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. But he goes further to say this. He said, test me. I want you to test me. I want you to give me that last. I want you to test me, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I would not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessings that there would not be room enough to store it. But you don't know because you're afraid to give that $5 or that $10. So you will say, I have an experience. Have you stepped out on faith? That's in Malachi 3 and 10. Some people who's on a, a tight, fixed little income, give. Hi, Kathleen, give. So he said, test me, says the Lord Almighty, see if I would not throw Open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. And I have here, Geraldine is listed here, four ways to give into our ministry. And you'll be blessed. We send letters to you of your giving so that you'll have that information. You'll know what's going on. Hi, Lee from Ghana. That's okay. If you're late, you can come back and listen. We keep you posted of what's going on. We let you know who you're helping. And, but we need your help to sustain us. And we know that God will provide. So we ask you this morning to take a step of faith and pray and ask God to touch your heart to give into the ministry. And we, like I said, we have the ways to give here. And that's all I'm going to say about giving because I want now to give the person a chance before it's 9.55. You don't have to finish at 10. There may be somebody on here hurting. 
somebody who do not know Jesus, somebody who wants to be a part of this family. If you are hurting today and want release from your pain, we want you to know that God is near to those who are brokenhearted. That's Psalm 34, 18. Through the forgiveness of our sins on the cross, Jesus provided an opportunity to live a more accessible life. If you would like that, you could accept Jesus Christ's gift of salvation and be saved today. God has said, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. That's in Hebrews 13 and 5. To all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. That's in John 1 and 12. He won't leave you and he won't leave you disappointed. God desires a relationship with you. If you feel lost right now, you can return to the fold by entering a relationship with God. All you must do is to ask Jesus to forgive you for your sins and ask him into your heart by faith. That's in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Romans 10 and 9 in the Bible, Lord, you said that if we confess the Lord our God and believe in our hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead, we shall be saved. Right now, I confess Jesus as my Lord. With my heart, I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. Therefore, from this day forward, help me to live every day for you and in a way that pleases you. At this very moment, I accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. And according to his word, right now, I am saved. God cannot abandon you and he never will. And that's my message for today. And that's the salvation prayer for those of you who have made even, who maybe even have turned away and who haven't been faithful with your vow to him. You can renew that today. I'm so grateful and thankful that you all are here. It's 956. I got a few minutes. I can acknowledge those of you. I pray that I, I prayed and prayed all night long with this message because God wants you to know you will not stay disappointed. This is your year. And he tell you how to handle it. And I gave you examples of those leaders that, that God put in my heart to talk about and share. I want you to know that I want you to invite people to start coming to these Saturday morning services and gathering. We call them gathering. Somebody needs to hear these messages. And don't just all keep it to yourself. Invite friends, invite families to come. Invite the naysayers to come. And I want you to share this video today with people you know need to hear it. But I want you to invite others to come and join us on Saturday morning. We are non-denominational ministry. We ain't trying to take nobody's sheep. I know many of you belong to have your own church home. And many of you sow into your church ministry. And I often say, I know you have to give into your church ministry. But whatever you have that you can help with our ministry. And I'm thankful that you come and join me on Saturdays. We're open. We're outside the wall. So you, that's why I invite some of my ministry friends to come. Because if, there, if you're in an area you need a church home, I can direct you to them. But I come on Saturday, the day the Lord gave me to come and bring the word of God. And I thank each one of you that have been here today. It's 1050, 958. And I'm going to just um, now look at the, I want to just thank, thank those of you who have been on here. And uh, I want to call out some names and, and just bless you. I, I want you to uh, join me here on Wednesday at 1 o'clock. Uh, thank you, Lee from Ghana. And if I miss your name, Lord, please forgive me. Lee from Ghana and Kathleen uh, Erickson and Adele from Massachusetts and Celine from Georgia uh, and Colleen from New Mexico and Dr. P Pastor Dave from Wisconsin and Georgia from Eastern Tennessee and Lome, I don't know exactly where you're from, Lome, uh, Sarah from Minnesota and um, Gazelle from North Carolina and Nicole from Minnesota. We have uh, 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 Anna from Wisconsin and Juliana from New York and uh, uh, I'm just trying to say Hannah from Jamaica. Uh, we have, uh, 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 my goodness, LJ from Wisconsin. We have Hannah again from Jamaica. Uh, thank you, Geraldine. I want to thank you, Lisa from Wisconsin. Uh, those of you, uh, everyone uh, that is on here, I want to thank you. Uh, uh, let's see, I, I know I missed some others. Carolyn that was on here. Um, just want to make sure I can get through the names of those that I saw on here. I want to recognize and acknowledge those. I want to thank you all again for taking time. You could have been doing anything today, but you took time to come and to share with and to listen to the word of God. Devon from Tennessee. Yes, yes. If I miss you, please forgive me, but I'm trying to go. Hannah again from Jamaica. Those of you, Heather from Tennessee. Yes. Thank you again, Geraldine. And let's see, did I miss someone? Pam, Pam Kastner from Wisconsin. Lord, I need you. We have a good group on here today. Nancy from Tennessee. Yes. 
Mike Dante from Haiti, Nicole again from Wisconsin, Pastor Dave and Renee Hill, yes, from Wisconsin. La Canta, uh, and Louis Gion, I think that is. Yes. So I want to thank all of you, LG. I want to thank all of you, Wilmas, all of you that was here this morning that join in to listen. Uh, please share the message again. Uh, bless each one of you with love and happiness. It's 10 o'clock. We made it. We made it. The song said, Lord, I need you. I'm praying for those. Nicole, I'll be praying for Dan's mom and Carolyn. We're praying for your healing and and those who have prayer requests, please let us know. We love to pray. Yes. So thank you again for joining me this morning. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense this morning. A day out from Massachusetts. Yes. Oh God, how I need you. You're my one defense, my righteousness. Oh God, how I need you. You're my one defense, my righteousness. Oh God, how I need you. I just want to send a thank you also to Shirley of Tennessee and Debbie from Virginia and those from New Zealand, Australia, Pakistan, India, and Africa. Uh, thank you very much for joining me today. Be blessed. Have a great week. God love you and I love you too until we meet again. And if Jesus delay his coming, I'll see you on Wednesday. Be blessed. Goodbye.